Hi guys, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the ZI8. I've been having problems with my ZI8 camera and uh, I'll show you how to clean the lens and um, I've also got a problem with uh, the USB lead on one of them and I saw on the internet that I can actually buy a replacement lead. Um, so before I buy it I want to make sure that I can actually uh, gain access to the lead because I've opened one of these cameras up before and I sort of chickened out halfway through um, but um, I, I've opened this one up already but I'll go through the procedure because it's it's not straightforward and um, uh, you know I haven't seen anybody else do exactly what I'm doing here so I thought I'd share this with you um, I haven't bought the replacement uh, USB lead yet um, but now I feel quite happy to go out and buy it. Um, there's uh, a fair chance that you could damage your camera opening it up and doing what I'm doing. So, um, you know, just, just be aware. I've always been very nervous about this uh, little USB connector. And um, I normally use the camera on a tripod. And um, I keep this, uh, this little um, uh, clip-on head on the camera all the time and I leave the USB port sticking out so as when I'm uh, making a video I can um, just unclip it and connect it to the computer and um, you know I'm, I'm very often doing quite a lot of downloads so I'll make a little bit of video and then add a bit and, and carry on. Uh, so I don't waggle this about very often at all so I was very surprised that it broke uh, so early in its life but anyway <clears throat> Uh, what you do is uh, open up the camera in the normal way and take the battery out. Then to get to the lens you remove this screw. Now a word of warning, the screws are all different lengths and um, I've already disassembled this camera and these are the screws that I've taken out and uh, I'll put a close-up of this on the screen um, so I've numbered the screws uh, number one is the first one to come out for the lens and uh, so that's come from there then what you do is you push that part of the body up and it only goes up that distance uh, about three or four millimeters and then you can just lift that off. That comes out that way. That allows you to get to the lens so as you can clean the uh, inside and of the lens. And if you need to get at uh, that part of the lens as well. So that's the uh, the first the first thing. Now that little screw is 3.3 uh, millimeters long. Um, these other screws that we're going to take out, uh, some are 5.2, 7.4 millimeters long, 4.9, 3.7, 4.7, 4 and then there's some others around the back that we're going to be taking out that are 5.6. Um, uh, so as soon as you read, I took that one out, and then I realized these others were a different length. I thought I'll keep a proper note of it. Here I've actually put the dimensions, so if you've chucked them all into a pot, at least uh, you could sort them out for this. There's uh, one screw which is different, and that's this little fella here, uh, which uh, is in this uh, uh, bottom left-hand corner as we look uh, into the lens of the camera, and it's this one that the uh, this little um, mechanism uh, for the USB pivots on. That screw is a machine screw, it's a fine thread. The others are all coarse threads uh, and again I'll give you some close-ups of those. Okay so we've uh, we've got the front taken off then if we look at this camera um, there are two screws at the top when we take the cover off and then the uh, there, there, there there, there and there. So it's all of the screws that you see once the lens cover is removed. <clears throat> once you've got all of those off, 
um, the, the case is still held together and you'll find that you can uh, open the USB port and get your fingers in and start to prise these apart and you'll feel as though you're going to break the camera and what it is um, if you yank at it you you will do but there's a little plastic foot there a little clip there and uh, a corresponding part on the other side there so again I'll get close-ups of those so as you can see so those two are holding it now then when you actually pull it apart what happens is there's a ribbon cable which is here I've already disconnected that I'm not going to put it back in because I don't want to disconnect it more times than needs be um, but that ribbon cable is held in a socket there and what you need to do is gently pull that ribbon cable out and that is really quite tricky because there's not a lot of room to get your fingers in to do anything um, uh, I uh, very gently used a, a pair of tweezers to to pull that out now I said I'd show you some of the things that will go wrong or can go wrong and one of the things that can happen as has happened here is uh, this little uh, device has fallen off and this is the uh, spring mechanism that holds uh, the USP or pushes the USB port uh, plug into position and it's got this little hook on the end and that has to line up on this brass component down here so again I think we're going to need some good close-ups there in the plastic body there is a very small slot down there and this end has to go into that slot okay when um, when we get this far um, there's also a little uh, steel pin that little pin allows the, um, the lead to pivot there incidentally there's um, uh, uh, a little magnet there and I wonder what the devil's that for there that, and that little magnet is holding the uh, metal part of the USB plug in there so you'll see um, anyway uh, so that little pin is uh, just as likely to drop out on you and as you'll see what I've done with the components here I use a sellotape dispenser and I just tape that part down and I've, I haven't done that because I've got all of the screws in in set order so uh, it just means when I put them back there's no ambiguity about what goes where the screen is um, uh, is held in place um, by a piece of double-sided sticky tape um, when you get to this stage you'll see there's uh, some other screws in here uh, that, that I've removed at this stage you don't take those screws out what you need to do is very very gently ease the screen away from the back panel and what I did um, was I assumed uh, that there was something else holding it, something glued into place um, and I was prepared to risk breaking it because I thought well it's what have I got to lose and uh, what I did was I put a, a wooden peg that's part of a clothes peg but just a tapered bit of wood in there and I got it in there and I left it for a little bit and then come back and I spent about 10 minutes teasing it apart and then I got to the stage where with uh, my tiny little torch here I could look down there and see 
And if I'm getting that, I could see that there was some white tape in there. And then, then with a scalpel, I went in and cut that tape. It's a, a sticky pad. Now then, at the bottom here, there's a very fine um, ribbon uh, it's made with Captain tape. That is not going to take uh, a lot of uh, abuse. It's uh, it'll be copper conductors on a Captain tape. If you break that, bend it too much, cut it, then you kiss it goodbye. Having got that open there, you can see there this double-sided tape. Okay, this pad, so in, in my case it's fairly close to the top, but I was able just to, to cut and cut and cut and, and eventually it just slipped open. The reason I went at it very gently is this is a glass panel. It's obviously uh, a sealed uh, glass. If you bend it, if you get in there with a screwdriver and you just force it off, there's every chance you will break the screen and then you might as well. Uh, and then you might as well kiss the camera goodbye. Okay, having got that to there, I've never let this bend more than 90 degrees. Um, I then removed the screws which are there, there, and there. And the reason for needing to get this out is um, with this ribbon cable out of the way, you can see there is a little white plug. And that plug there, that plug is uh, the end of the lead for this USB cable. Um, but even when you unplug that plug, you can't draw it out of the hole. What you need to do is lift this metal chassis out of the way but you couldn't lift it out of the way until the screen is removed because of the screw that's in that uh, bottom left hand corner so once you've lifted that up then again with a pair of tweezers I very gently slid that plug up, being very careful not to damage any of the components on the printed circuit board because that would be, uh, again, you kiss the camera goodbye. So once you've got that plug disconnected, ease that up and then you can bring the plug out. Okay, so um, what I had, uh, the fault I had with the camera was um, sometimes uh, it, it, the computer wouldn't recognize the camera, it'd say no device connected and something here has broken, even that plug is, is waggled about or the wires have broken, so I'll try and measure the continuity. Anyway, uh, in another video I'm going to talk about a sound problem uh, with this, but that's all I'm going to do on here. Obviously the reverse procedure to put it back together is just reverse everything you've seen. Don't bend this around, don't be tempted to cut this uh, copper foil because um, I'm not sure if it's there uh, just as a screen or as uh, some sort of thermal device relating to the battery, could be a bit of both, um, but uh, I wouldn't damage it um, and be very very careful when you slide this little um, ribbon cable back into the socket on the front screen. Um, okay, I hope you find that uh, interesting and helpful. If, if it helps you, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.